I really feel uh, excited uh, this time uh, because uh, my dream is coming true. What's your dream? Uh, my dream was to graduate and also to... Uh, but before graduation, I, I have to make defend my thesis and I feel like I'm almost grabbing my dream. So I'm very excited. And I'm very grateful uh, to this great university, that is Kangawan National University. I'm grateful to the Korean government, uh, to my government, the Uganda government, for this great opportunity which I was given to come here and partake the Masters in Agricultural Economics and Policy. So, I have really shared a lot of experience with the Korean people and uh, it will be a very great honor to share this experience with my country people. So thank you very much Korea, thank you very much Uganda, for God and my country. My name is Lekon Lanio and I'm from Nigeria. I am a representative of the Korean International Cooperative Agency who is in charge of this uh, program, sending us here to come and uh, undertake a master's degree program in agricultural and international policy, also resource economics. So I actually want to say a very big thank you to South Korean government to Koika Agency and to Nigerian government by nominating me to partake in this very wonderful program, which has actually given me an opportunity to mix up with different food people from different nations, Africa, Asia, America, and even the um, uh, Mongolia area and the likes, and also to give me an experience that I'm going to use to develop my country in the agricultural sector, not only in my country, Nigeria, also in Africa and the world at large, and also make agriculture, agricultural production and productivity very easy and uh, ensure there is food security everywhere. Thank you very much. Come uh, Samida. Good afternoon, uh, everybody. Uh, I am Vivek uh, from Nepal. I am the student of Kangan National University, and currently I am studying uh, Agriculture and issues to economics. Today we are going to finish our program. This is the last day to defense. We are going to finish our defense uh, today. So I'm to very much happy, and I want to give uh, thank you to all my all of my colleagues, yes. professors. Uh, thank you so much our Koika program. According to thank you so much. Unarun, uri yaksandari chinadni. 16개월 동안 다가온 항문전 기량을 마음껏 뽐내는, 뽐내는 날입니다. 그래서 우리로서는 상당히 기쁘고 자랑스럽고 대견하다고 좀 생각하고 있습니다. 학생들이 오늘 굉장히 긴장하고 있는데 실제는 그렇지가 않거든요. 오늘은 오늘 통해 갖고 다시 한번 더 자기 기량을 또 연마하고 향상시킬 수 있는 좋은 기회라고 생각합니다. 학생들이 오늘 잘 이용해 갖고 본인들이 원하는 말을 반드시 성취해서 다음 단계로 도약할 수 있는 좋은 기회가 되기를 기원하고 있습니다. 감사합니다. 오케이. Okay. Uh, the next presenter is a very popular piece. The title is the farmer's protection towards declining cardamom cardamom production in Hanchitan district of Nepal. Please. Good afternoon. My topic is uh, farmer processions towards the declining the cardamom production in Pasta district of Nepal. This is my topic. I am from Nepal. My name is Vivek. With the uh, naturally decorated unbroken range of the Himalayan Middle East, Middle Hilly Belt with the Georges Hills, Valley and Lake, and Tarai, which is called also Kiran regions. In the southern parts, the country has a total population of about uh, uh, 30 million, the majority of the people, uh, like 65.6% uh, .6 are engaged in the agriculture, according to AITC. Plant ranges from the 1 meter, 1.5 meters to, to, to 3 meters, 
and leaf are found at the upper portion of the stems. This crop is also uh, world's most third expensive spice after the vanilla and saffron. As usual, in Nepal cardamom, this is the content like 8.6% uh, moisture, 5% total as value, 1.5% as insoluble acid, 3.5% uh, soluble as and other factor. It is one of the high value cash crop and the main of the source of the cash income for the farmers in the eastern uh, Himalayan regions, including the eastern Nepal, Sikkim, and parts of the Darjeeling uh, district in the West Bengal of India and the southern Bhutan. It is believed that for the first time in the Nepal, cardamom was uh, introduced in the Ilam districts uh, in 1865 AD by Nepalese uh, laborers who went to the Sikkim for the seasonal work, but the commercial cultivation began in the late uh, 1950. At present, it is grown in the 53 districts of Nepal, mainly grown in the eastern <coughs> hill and the mountain area, gradually expanding to the western part. The tree that can be used for the sale. Uh, management in the large cardamom include this is the tree like like uh, melato, series. These are the species of the tree which is used for the selling the this crop. Contemporary market requirement resulting in the lower price to farmer. The production of cardamom in pasta district is decreasing, decreasing uh, order due to the incidence of the cardamom stem borers, uh, leaf eating caterpillar, a feed bacterial disease, rhizome rot. Lip, lip blight and viral disease. So uh, I have some, here is my general objective. So my general objective is that to assess the farmer. And here is the literature review. I have just concluded some point through the literature. This crop, why this crop is going to be uh, declined uh, uh, year by year. So these are the some literature review I have just concluded here. Uh, that is the Yadav Pradeep and uh, like Saudhiri Raju, they are just talking about why the production is going to down. So production of the large cardamom declining every year, making it an issue of the national concerns farmers. Perception survey of the 90 large cardamoms growing uh, household was con uh, conducted to assess the DG and insect test, uh, ranked first and followed by the rhizorome and the aphid terms in the insect uh, group and another group. This is the difference. So, Uh, this is my key suggestion and policy to feedback based on the finding of my study the following recommendations were made. Training where a regular basis should be conducted to provide the technical information about the good cultivation practices and post harvest management. Another is the availability of the modern vertigy drive should be uh, ensured for the better quality of the cardamom. And uh, second last further research should be conducted and the So why did you divide the whole sample into two groups? and what policy implications you can draw from this return. Depending in the one place and what is happening in the another group by showing some factors, a perception of the farmer. So I divided the in group uh, as, as like in group V. Next to Brenda. Today I'll be presenting to you my master's thesis. My title is Agriculture Credit and Sustainable Life with the Smallholder Farmers. Production, Literature Review, Methodology, Results and Discussion, and the Conclusion and Recommendation. <coughs> to start with, my country, Uganda, is an agrarian country, and uh, agriculture contributes. 23.7% of the country's GDP to credit. And uh, I'll focus more on agriculture credit. Smallholder farmers majorly depend on savings uh, to finance their farming. And uh, also, self help groups have proved to provide much of the credit rather than the formal financial institutions. Uh, previous studies have have previous studies have proved that agriculture finance and agriculture or agriculture credit really improves the livelihood of smallholder farmers. 
a study by today um, suggests that agriculture credits enabled modern uh, enabled farmers to acquire modern machinery, purchase improved varieties of farming inputs, and also employ skilled labor. Also, revealed that agricultural fi finance, um, the farmers that accessed it were able to increase their incomes and expenditures. Some of the characteristics of these farmers who are beneficiaries of agricultural credits are that they are more educated, they have larger, they have larger household sizes and own more land. Uh, in summary, agriculture credit could really be a great, a great potential to improve livelihoods and also to improve livelihoods and foster inclusive economic growth. FAO also suggests 20 action points also for the same goal of sustainable agriculture and uh, it includes facilitating access to productive resources of the access to finance from the formal investment in it remains scarce. The government of Uganda has the credit, the agriculture credit facility that supports only large scale farmers. And we also have 12.2% of the total banking loans, that is a very low number. And uh, the formal inclusion is at 58% but uptake is at 11%, so that really suggests that there's a problem in my country. And self-help groups uh, that are not even formally registered are the ones that are offering credit to smallholder farmers in comparison to the formal financial institutions and government institutions that should be actually providing this credit. The focus of my study, my major aim, is to examine the determinants and contributions of agricultural credit to livelihoods of smallholder farmers. Proportions of livelihood assets possessed by smallholder farmers in Uganda. And the sustainable livelihood concept, most of the, which is financial services. However, uh, all the individual participants that remained in this study had remained with the data from all the three surveys. And also, uh, those who had complete data on the sustainable livelihood index, I used, uh, I followed uh, my objective number three. Uh, which is the relationship between credit access and uh, SLI. I used binary, binary logistic regression. And the gender, I have more female farmers at 54.4%. The education <coughs> level, more were um, had primary level and below. And th that was at 40.2%. Uh, more were married at 67.5. More of the participants came from the eastern region at 34 uh, percent. More of the participants were household heads at 47.8. The income source of uh, the primary income source at 76.9, and the experience, the farming experience, was greater than uh, 10 years at. 61.2. Moving on to the uh, description of other characteristics alongside access to credit. Well, uh, the married, as you can see, had a higher percentage uh, of those that accessed credit compared to those that didn't access one. And then the relationship to household head. We had only uh, sons being significant, but according to the reference category, which is ahead, they were less likely to access credit. And then the Western region, uh, people from the Western region were more likely to access credit by 2.24 uh, uh, times uh, compared to the reference category, which is the central. And uh, income also, you can see that uh, it was significant at all levels uh, that were below that the that were actually sorry that were yes that were below that uh, three hundred thousand and uh, monthly expenditure the more that uh, you the more that the more that you spent actually proved that the, that is the more that you access credit savings we had those that serve with family and friends. Uh, being five times more likely to access credit. Uh, moving on to membership of uh, 
of association that was 47 percent and financial account highest contribution to sustainable livelihood with a percentage of 30.4 percent and a relationship uh, uh sorry for my third objective which is the relationship between sli and uh, access to credit this is the distribution but i won't go through it because of time i'll go right to the final one Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's a great series of presentation. Thank you. Mean plus minus standard error, right? When you show your uh, descriptive statistics, you better show uh, the your de dependent variable to the summary statistics of your dependent variable. That is why they're the ones I included in the. Yeah, window. that's good. But yeah. It would be much, much better if you counter for other confounding factors. Okay, thank you very much. Next, good evening, my dear professors. Good evening, uh, my colleagues. It is a, a honor and a privilege, uh, and it is a dream come true to present my research paper about climate change and the volatility of coffee price in Uganda. Coffee business in Uganda dates back in the 1920s. So coffee is Uganda's most important cash crop. And the, uh, the coffee is produced by, one, by 1 1.5, 1.7 million smallholder coffee farmers. Uh, Robusta is the most important variety grown in Uganda. Uh, and Uganda currently is number one in Africa, and the second, in number one in Africa as far as robusta production is concerned, and second in Africa in the entire of production. In the world is number seven. Uh, so smallholder farmers face uh, significant difficulties since uh, their livelihoods depend on coffee incomes. So, and uh, to continue with the background, Uganda is an agricultural based economy uh, with production of other foodstuffs, other uh, cultural products, and is a food basket in East Africa. Our culture contributes 25% uh, to GDP, and uh, the agricultural products they contribute around 35% of the foreign exchange earnings, and the coffee alone contributes. Uh, percent about the climate uh, Uganda is a tropical climate country with around the the, the, the dark blue is the forest the tropical forest which are near Lake Victoria with a mean monthly precipitation ranging from uh, 39.6 millimeter uh, to 157.7 millimeter that is from June to April, and we have two seasons of production. Uh, the varieties, as I told you, we produce robusta coffee, and the, which is around the 80 percent, and the other variety is the Arabica coffee. Uh, the robusta is produced uh, at uh, altitude of around the 900, between 900 and 100, 1,000 and 500 meters above sea level, and the other one is a highland crop, highland coffee crop. That is at altitude of 1,300, between 1,300 and 2,000 <coughs> meters above sea level. Then uh, the coffee plant can, uh, coffee production areas in Uganda have become drier and hotter over the past areas in the average and all variability of its actual of prices. So when supply and demand are, so in other words, then the coffee, how it is traded. It is traded according to the coffee future. So coffee is determined in advance. And the coffee futures can be prone to extremely volatile, volatility, extreme volatility. So this is, uh, that means low prices induce poor management practices by smallholder farmers, coffee farmers, hence reducing production capacity, activity, and the consumer price index. So uh, reflected in the, by the, the current, the second difference 
because the first one was not really significant at the 1%. Then the uh, findings clearly indicate the presence of a time varying condition of volatility on the Bosta coffee price. And the coffee price volatility shocks are large, <coughs> meaning that the effect of today's shocks remain in forecast of variance for many periods in the future. Any yes. reasons why you choose June 1995? Yes, uh, uh, June 1995, uh, that was the time when the government was recovering from uh, some kind of uh, structural reforms. Because uh, in 1980s there was some problems with the between 90. So the coffee sector was handed over to the private sector to manage. So they were sharing. And uh, between that period, the, the, the problems of price, coffee price fluctuation were somehow solved. But still, farmers continue <laughs> to observe uh, fluctuations in prices. Yeah, so what is the dependent variable here? Uh, the dependent variable in this class, in this case, is the coffee price returns. Sir? Coffee price returns, because as I told you, I... Coffee price what? Returns, coffee price returns. Not volatility, variance of... Of course, in this case, I interpreted coffee price returns as volatility. I don't know whether I'm right, because I was looking at those fluctuations. Because if you calculate coffee price returns, it's more like of volatility. Because I'm a little bit confused whether your dependent variable is the vari variance of coffee price or mean of coffee price because if you if you look at the conclusion part it says climate change was found to have little impact on volatility so I'm just wondering whether you use volatility of coffee price as a your dependent variable yes I did because as a definition of volatility these are the changes in variance and uh, uh, I will seek for more advice because when you look at the method for calculating price returns, it's more like of the variance, the variances. So I would also ask um, uh, my dear professors the reason as to why I had to convert uh, from change price change to price returns to do my analysis. So I thought it is more like of volatility because these are the variances, the changes. So that's why I consider uh, the coffee price returns. Make it a bit snappy in order not to uh, waste our time. So yeah, I'm actually working on analysis, uh, analysis of efficiency of improved seed production in FCT Abuja, which is Nigeria. I'm from Nigeria, so I'm working on the analysis of improved seed I improve rice seed. So just a bit about introduction. We are guaranteed 40 to 50 percent of the productivity level. That is a known factor. And so many researches have been done on that. Like improved seed is actually key for any agricultural production. So let me just go back to let me go straight to my problem statement. Why am I here? Number one, the pro the, the solution or the problem I want to solve or the the solution of the problem that I, that is existing that I want to solve is number one. Inability to get improved rice seed for large scale production. That is one. Because the large scale companies, the large scale seed companies that are always saying they don't have enough of seed to go into their production. That is one. And number two again, inadequate seed production, seed multiplication, processing and storage facility. You and I know that to, to develop a good storage facility is very expensive. Talking about getting a silo, getting a dryer and some other things like that. And again, limited technical know-how on the multiplication and production of agricultural seed. We should all know that seed production is a very technical thing. It's very, it's very different from normal being a farmer planting things. Go about ensuring that you produce seed and you produce quality seed for farmers to use. And again, limited or no access to improve farm machineries and technology. And we all know that. Farm machineries is very, very expensive. To get a tractor, you have to spend thousands of dollars to get a tractor, talking about combined harvesters and some other things. So this one is also like a limitation to um, 
to agricultural productivity because if you don't have uh, farm machineries to do your work very well, of course, you'll waste more time and you'll waste more resources and you won't get the required yield which you desire. So my research question goes thus, what are the social economic characteristics of improved rice seed growers in the study area? That is one. And number two, what are the profitability and return of investment for improved rice seed production in the study area? And number three, is improved rice seed production economically efficient? While lastly, is what are the major constraints militating against improved rice seed production in my study area, which is FCT Abuja, Nigeria? And like um, my, my research question said, so these are the aims of my um, research to analyze the economic efficiency, stability, and return of investment for improved rice seed production in study area. Estimate the economic efficiency of improved rice seed growers in the study area and identify major constraints militating against improved rice seed in the study area. Why this is my um, research hypothesis? Well, I, I'm going to put you through how I got this, but I actually used the likelihood um, uh, ratio test, which uh, shows that there was inefficiency in my in my data. So when there's an inefficiency in your data set then you're going to reject the null hypothesis. So that is why this one comes here. So now, um, justification of the study, development of agricultural sector in Nigeria requires quality rice seed as a major input to allocate limited resources efficiently, added knowledge and a source of reference for further studies. The study will help policymakers in formulating policies that will enhance improved rice seed production because this is also another major aim why I'm carrying out this course because when I go back to my country these are the things I have to present in my office to the Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development and also to the President and see how we can input this in the Nigerian agricultural production. The age, the tractor usage and the inter cropping and or primary, uh, these are the primary determinants of technical efficiency and also in Ghana I also read about Ghana and um, they said their own technical efficiency is between um, 20, 24.5 to 85% and these are also the factors that affect the technical efficiency which is the age, the gender, experience, credit, access and use of improved seed for their production. Because you should know that even before, when you go into seed production, you also need improved seed. Efficient seed producer, you need a breeder seed. And even if you want to go to, into a breeder seed production, you also need champlasm and some other things to develop these things. So these are the factors there. And again, also I also read about uh, in Sri Lanka, my brother Sri Lanka is not here, where they have um, their own is from 72 to 63. I also went to India too, to get um, some information about their technical efficiency, which also ranges from 71.39 to 98 point. So now, uh, my primary data, the primary, primary uh, the seed business is talking about the return of investment, talking about the uh, profitability, the gross margin, the net profit, and some other things. So this is what I did. And also, research institutes should develop improved rice seeds with traditional preferred variety, drought resistant, disease tolerance, more pro uh, productivity pattern, high yielding. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, let me double check. So, the the second part of analysis, in the second part of the analysis, depend on variable inefficiency measures, right? Yes, sir. So, which means that as the number of extension visits increase, the farmers get inefficient. So when this came out, I was I had to discuss with my professor. I said, why is this positive? It's meant to be negative, but it's research. And when the result comes, you have to just present it and explain the reason why it's like this. Oh, thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
하나, 둘, 셋! 치즈! <웃음> 